Hello, hello, and welcome back to your next class. Today, we are going to talk about paramountcy. We have heard paramountcy quite a number of times before this in our previous classes, but today we are going to understand what paramountcy is really in detail. The doctrine of federal paramountcy in Canada is used to resolve conflicts between federal and provincial laws. One of the main problems with these conflicts is inconsistency between laws enacted by different legislative bodies within the Federation. In Canada, the doctrine of implied repeal is used to reconcile conflicts between inconsistent laws enacted by the same legislative body. However, when it comes to federal and provincial laws, neither the federal parliament nor a provincial legislature has the power to repeal others' laws. To address this issue, the courts have appointed the doctrine of federal paramountcy, which states when there are conflicting federal and provincial laws, the federal law takes precedence. So, federal law would be paramount. The first requirement for the doctrine of federal paramountcy is validity. The validity of each law is determined by examining whether the subject matter of law falls within the powers granted to the enacting body. If one law fails this test, the issue is resolved without considering the doctrine of federal paramounts. Only if both laws, the federal law and the provincial law, only if both laws are found to be valid independently, it is necessary then to determine whether they are inconsistent with each other. Let's talk about it in detail. The second requirement of the doctrine of federal paramountcy is determining whether two laws are inconsistent with each other. This is significant because it determines whether the doctrine of federal paramountcy applies, which gives federal law precedence over provincial laws. A wide definition of inconsistency would result in more provincial laws being invalidated due to conflicts with the federal law giving the federal government more power in the federal system. A narrow definition of inconsistency would allow more provincial laws to stand, even if they are not in perfect harmony with federal laws. Canadian courts have generally followed a course of restraint in interpreting inconsistency between federal and provincial laws, adopting a narrow definition of inconsistency. When two laws directly regulate conduct and it is impossible for them to comply with both of them, an express contradiction exists. For example, if a federal law states that Japanese citizens in Canada must be afforded the same employment opportunities as Canadian citizens, and a provincial law states that Japanese citizens cannot be employed in the mines, the laws are expressly in contradiction to each other. This was seen in the case of Attorney General British Columbia vs. Attorney General Canada, 1923, Carswell, British Columbia, 94. It is possible for there to be an overlapping federal and provincial law that can both be complied with, but they do not directly contradict with each other. However, if the effect of the provincial law would be to frustrate the purpose of federal law, it is considered a case of inconsistency. If the effect of the provincial law would be to frustrate the purpose of the federal law, it is considered a case of inconsistency. In order to determine whether this is the case, it is necessary to identify the purpose of the federal law and the effect of the provincial law on the federal law. If the provincial law undermines or obstructs the purpose of the federal law, it is considered inconsistent and the doctrine of federal paramountcy would apply, giving the federal law precedence. In Canada, the doctrine of paramountcy only holds that a federal law takes precedence over provincial law if the provincial law directly contradicts the federal law. The doctrine of covering field has been rejected now, but I will just mention it. The doctrine of covering field held that when a federal law is passed on a particular subject, it precludes the provinces from enacting laws on the same subject. This doctrine is rejected now. However, the federal parliament can still specify that the federal law should take precedence over provincial law in a particular situation even if the two laws do not directly contradict each other. When it comes to criminal law, 
there can be situations where a single action can be seen as a violation of both federal and provincial laws. This means that an individual could potentially face charges under both law for the same action. This is called overlapping or duplicative penal provisions and it raises issues around double jeopardy. However, a doctrine of paramountcy does not apply in the cases of double civil liability and the issue must be resolved through other legal means. Where there is a conflict between a federal and a provincial law, a doctrine of federal paramountcy dictates that the federal law must be followed over the provincial law. This means that the provincial law is deemed inoperative to the extent that it is inconsistent with the federal law. This principle ensures that there is inconsistency and clarity in law and the federal law takes precedence over the provincial law in case of inconsistency. In conclusion, the doctrine of federal paramountcy is a crucial legal principle in Canada that ensures that the conflict between federal and provincial laws are resolved fairly and justly. It ensures that valid federal law take precedence over valid provincial law in the cases of inconsistency, but only to the extent of inconsistency between two laws, not completely, just the inconsistent part. This principle promotes consistency and clarity in law and helps prevent confusion that could arise from conflicting laws. Let's get to the case laws. Rothman, Benson and Hedges uh, versus Saskatchewan which is a Supreme Court case. In this case, the Supreme Court of Canada dealt with the doctrine of federal paramountcy. The case involved a tobacco company that challenged a section of Saskatchewan Tobacco Control Act, which banned advertising and display of tobacco-related products in the premise where persons under of 18 years were permitted. The company argued that this section was inconsistent with the section of Federal Tobacco Act which allows retailers to display tobacco and signs indicating the availability and price. The company argued that this section was inconsistent with the section of the Federal Tobacco Act, which allows retailers to display tobacco and signs indicating the availability and the price of tobacco. The main issue in this case was whether the doctrine of federal paramountcy should apply. Two questions arose in this regard. First one, the whether a person could simultaneously comply with both sections. Second, whether the Saskatchewan Act frustrated Parliament's purpose in enacting the Federal Act. The Supreme Court held that the doctrine of federal the Supreme Court held that the doctrine of federal paramountcy did not apply in this case. Firstly, the court found that it was possible for a retailer to comply with both sections by either not allowing anyone under the age of 18 on the premises or by not displaying tobacco or tobacco related products. Therefore, there was no impossibility of dual compliance. Secondly, the court found that the Saskatchewan Act did not frustrate the legislative purpose of the Federal Act. Therefore, the appeal was allowed and the provincial legislation was not rendered inoperative by the Panamancy Doctrine. This case is significant as it shows that the doctrine of Federal Paramountcy is not always applicable and the court will carefully consider consistency of Federal and Provincial laws before applying this doctrine. In the next class, we'll discuss interjurisdictional immunity.